Hey, it's Nathan. This video is essentially in the same format as this one about integration, but in this video, I'm going to go ahead and build up from essentially nothing to the fundamental theorem of finitely generated abelian groups. So, I'm just going to go ahead and start with number one, simple numeracy. So at this point in your mathematical career, you probably haven't seen the plus symbol in the context of mathematics. You're just starting out and you have not much mathematical knowledge to you anyway. And since you're small, people are probably more concerned with simplistic numeracy as opposed to arithmetic at this point. You're learning to recognize the number of a group of objects and how to count. You might even stumble on what comes after 99 the first time you count that high. But eventually, you'll have to learn what the plus symbol means, which brings us to number two, basic arithmetic. At some point, someone will connect the idea of what comes after a number in counting to adding one to it. And the little mystery behind what the plus sign means quickly fades into a list of addition problems. Over the period of several years, these small problems will begin to work with larger and larger numbers, and some other operations will be introduced, like subtraction, multiplication, and division, among others. And they all in some way stem back to the idea of addition. While your arithmetic ability is being developed, the number system that you're working in is also going to develop. And as the number system that you're working with develops, it makes more and more sense to talk about. Three, algebra. After many a computation, there are now these things called equations and expressions that you have to deal with that all include some variable, which usually starts out as just the letter x. But this introduction of this letter to the numerical world might throw you off at first. It's just a number, and you've got to remember that it's just a number. And as you accept that this letter is now just a number, the mathematical alphabet that you were used to grows fairly quickly. Accepting that complicates and deepens your understanding of arithmetic. At this point, the emphasis is no longer placed on what operations you're doing, but instead it directs itself more to figuring out what some unknown variable is. As addition and the other operations motivated by it fade into the cacophony of symbols present in algebra, functions are introduced, and all of the understanding of arithmetic you've developed will be pushed to new techniques like those of factoring and polynomial division that help one generate those pictures that correspond to the arrangement of symbols connected to a y equals, or just graphs, in other words. And then there's a larger jump. At this point, you should have some general numeracy. You've probably been doing algebra or have encountered algebra in math in some form for a while now, but you've decided to continue learning math just for learning math instead of, let's say, the applications that inspired algebra. So this jump to number four, where plus means something else, gives us lots of different ideas of addition. So while learning to write proofs, you might first encounter modular arithmetic, which is this very similar form of addition that's reductive and reduces things down to remainders all the time. In linear algebra, you might also encounter matrices, which also have a form of addition to them that's very similar to the addition that you're used to. You just do the addition that you're used to entry-wise. You can even combine the two and do modular arithmetic on matrices as well. Both yield different meanings for what plus means, and depending on what kind of mathematical structures you are studying, you learn that there are several different ways that the plus sign can be interpreted. For instance, if you ever encounter an elliptic curve while you're going through this process, the addition makes sense on those curves and is purely geometric. That being said, the different types of addition that you encounter will require a bit more mathematical background than others to completely understand them. But the common thread between them all leads us to the idea of number five, which is abelian groups. So at this point, you've seen several different types of addition, or you are continuing to develop those different ideas of addition. But each one of these additions has very nice properties. And so we move away from computing these types of addition to looking at the structure of what it means to have addition work somewhere. 
This leads to the idea of abelian groups, which are sets with an operation that works like all of the other additions that you've encountered and has the following properties. These operations are going to be closed, so addition doesn't move you outside of the set you're working with. Associative, so you can group things together in a particular way. Commutative, which is something special to abelian groups, you'll learn. So you can switch the order in which you add things. There is going to be an identity element, so something that acts like zero with normal addition. And then there's also going to be inverses, or something that takes you back to your identity for every element in your set. So again, when you have a set and an operation that have these properties, then you end up in a context of what we call an abelian group. You'll learn that abelian groups are a specialization of just the normal group. And these are abstract objects that are usually discussed as a part of an aptly named subject of abstract algebra. In the abstract, computations with a particular addition become an example of just one thing that exists in the overall structure of the class of abelian groups. After a bit of work studying groups and their structure in general, you eventually arrive at a theorem that nails down exactly what these general addition operations can look like for a fairly large class. This is the fundamental theorem of finitely generated abelian groups. Although it is notationally dense at first glance, it just tells us that all of these versions of addition in the finitely generated case just act like integer addition or a modular addition in each coordinate. And yeah, we've gotten to the point that I wanted to get to at the end of this video. So if you enjoy that, if you enjoy this video or things like the integration video I did where I try to start with something smaller and less complex and build up to something that's super dense, uh, and show how you might logically get there. Uh, you can give this video a thumbs up and tell me I should make more of them, possibly about other things that occur in other subjects like topology or geometry, etc. Otherwise, uh, I do have other more rigorous math stuff on the channel, so you can go ahead and subscribe for all of that. Otherwise, that's all I've got for you today. Uh, as always, I am Nathan, this was Chalk, and I will see you next time.